Hello, Nana here. Oh, welcome back to Path of Exile. We are playing in the full area of expansion, as well as the Harbinger League. While leveling, we're playing Solar Southbound. Once we hit maps, I well, let's just say I'll reserve the right to drop off of Solar Southbound. Um, if it becomes a little bit too frustrating to build up a mapping pool. Or if there's just some crazy unique items or you know, other things I want to experiment with and see where we can push the build. But for leveling I do enjoy the uh, Solar Cell Found experience. Since it basically prevents you from getting too overpowered via trading. So you get a very... An, an experience that's very reflective of the typical leveling experience rather than that you only get if you oh, use poe.trade and you trade for good uh, rare items for you know, cheap prices and therefore significantly put yourself above the average power curve that a character goes through because that will distort your playthrough experience there are some uh, beasties very nearby So at the time of a recording, there has been an announcement that next week the, the devs are going to let us know what they're going to do with the uh, Harbinger League to uh, spice things up a little bit more. So it's now the Saturday, so I suspect it's probably going to be Tuesday or Wednesday when we hear more. So let's not face tank this. So what I'll do is just record the remainder of Act 7. That uh, should probably get me enough footage for most of the week. And then I'm going to wait for the Harbinger changes and then we can do... Or it's Act 8 that we're in now, aren't we? No, it's Act 7. Okay, so I'll complete Act 7 under the uh, current changes and then... Um, once we know more about the Harbinger changes and especially if they appear during the week, then I'll record the next Act. Act 8 and beyond with the new Harbinger. To well, presumably spice things up a little bit and make it a little bit more of an interesting mechanism. An orb of not so immense value. So we're in a, in a broken bridge area. We have been here before. back in act two there's undead there's vultures i still think they look like maggots with wings but sure let's call them vultures so this area contains yet another one of the uh, unique enemies that is on our wish list of things to murderize so just gonna have a bit of a, a look around and see if we can find it Just not gonna skip too many things and just push forward. There's also a uh, Whalem's Locket that we have to uh, look for. Which I believe was somewhere to the top of the map. We got Tora on the map, so that oh, getting a, a master on your map might have some influence on how the layouts are generated. So could be that if you run it and you don't encounter a master, then things will look different. But funny enough that all these uh, brittle and disbanded bandits are basically bandits that we murdered back in Act 2. And the beasties are not their skeletal versions, they just came in, wandering in. It's always fun to see that contrast. Okay, let's do that. Hey, we actually got a desecrate as well as a bone offering triggered in the same place. That does not happen all that often, I might imagine. 
But uh, something I've been trying to pay a little bit of attention to while doing my warm up, you know, running the, the master missions, things like that. And especially if you're in an area and there's no corpses yet, then the desecrate and bone offering, they will not chain into each other. But most of the time it just means that your bone offering is not going to do anything. And that desecrate is just going to put corpses on the floor. And you have to wait for the next trigger to actually benefit from it. So that was uh, Waylam's locket. The locket of his dead wife. He might be a, a zombie pirate, but he's also a little bit sentimental. Yeah, and since I have no idea what we're going to get, or I, don't, I don't remember what we're going to get, let's just quickly empty our pockets here. So, let's see, bonnet shield, nothing truly useful on there, so resist at least. And we don't use any of the other item types, so... That is a convenience. So, oh, Waylam. Here's your locket. Me locket! Oh, oh, oh. oh, me darling. Me beautiful Meredith. How I miss your shuddering bosoms. Your quivering thighs. Oh. She had a heart to melt an iceberg, and teats the size of a... Ooh. Well, anyway, I, I thank you greatly. Please, whatever else be in that lockbox, take your pick from it. This locket be the only treasure I need. Sentimental indeed. Ah, then there's all kinds of special flasks in here, but the one I want, the sulfur flask, it is not. Uh, there. This is this is evil. Game, this is evil. Pirates. Pirates. Just can't rely on them. Uh, let's grab a flower. Uh, that one. Here are ways to buy. Phasing. Shock removal. Restoration. Now oh, what? We'll uh, stash it away. And sulfur is the one that, that's not going to help us tank in places. Or at least uh, rapidly regenerate some uh, lost life. So a small boost to damage. Ooh, okay. So. so I do like that. The other ones are less enthusiastic about. Especially because I focus on, focus on neither evasion nor armor. So, yeah. ooh, harbinger. Is that a, a yellow harbinger mob? That might be a yellow harbinger mob. And there we are. Oh, sure, transmit charge. Let's keep looking for uh, that unique. Might simply be just waiting along the road. That is, of course, possible. Would be a sensible place for uh, a unique to be, because most often you do use the, the road to guide your way to the next area. Speaking of, let's see, level 50 area, I'm 54, so I am over leveled a little bit. Orb of fusion. But no, just running around and killing things. Picking up a, a nice amount of just casual currency. Oh, a fuse here. Chaos out there. Which I can then, of course, waste on trying to improve some of the crappy rares I have. And most of the time, just... Uh, you end up not improving what you have. That's the, that's the, the biggest frustration of crafting your own gear. She got something that is somewhat decent on a, a lower tier base. And trying to get comparable mods on a higher tier base is... It's always a bit of an exercise in frustration. It's part of the fun, but it's also just part of the frustration. 
slightly faster button minions. Got a nice stipmite flask there, just to uh, make things a little blinded as they were trying to claw their way through me. So I, I, once again, I thought I heard bleeding, but I didn't. So kill unique monsters. The bundle of woe ought to be around here somewhere. Oh. Yeah. You know what? I think I gave it my best. At some point, you should try to just give up on doing full clears on all the areas. Because I think we. This is not. No, this area is not going to change like the uh, square back in X6. So I'll be back at some point just to close this up. So that's the one that I got away for now. So we're gonna travel to the Fell Shrine Crypt. Oh, hello there, Antlerman. Um, some of these uh, skeletons learned a cyclone, it looks like. Makes me wonder could I get some cyclone skeletons in my skeleton army? Would actually be cool if the minions that you summon, if oh, they had their own little character sheets that you could socket abilities into and put gear on the things like that. It's almost like a like a tactical RPG or something. Just outfitting your your minions and then oh, you can have some, some some cyclone minions. You can have some some mages. You can have some archers. You can maybe have a, a necromancer or something. Yeah, here you see it again. Now there's a, a desecrate that went up, but desecrate was the thing that spawned the corpses, so the associated bone offering did not trigger. Let's actually just double check our constant damage taken setup. Mortal calls first, desecrate is second. Bone offering is last because it does follow the pattern from top to bottom. Maybe technically, um, Desecrate could go first and Mortal Call could go second because I do think it casts them um, after each other. But I must admit that the very specific methods of how the, the uh, Cosmic Damage Taken works in regards to timing is something that. Not entirely sure of. Probably should just test it on standard with a, a tabula rasa. Because then of course you can put a desecrate in as the very first. And a bone offering as the very last. And have a couple of skills with very long cooldowns in between. Just to see what it would be like. Oop. Getting flanked. Okay, actually, taking some, uh, needing to take some damage. So those are knitted horrors. They don't quite belong here, do they? Oh, how's the bundle of woe? Funny. So I got my areas wrong. So it's a good thing I didn't frantically search the previous area for that, because the bundle of woe actually belongs here in the Felsran ruins. Hello. I think you're dead before you crawl out of the floor. Yep. Idolized saints. Some different versions of uh, living statues. And more discipline. That's always good. 
In total health pools now just over 3000 if you add life and energy shields together. Ooh, and skeletons went up a level so that means more life for those buggers. And therefore more damage when I explode them. 55. Golems go up. Dark Pact goes up. And uh, there is a uh, there in there. Yeah. Let's have a, a quick look. We were heading over here. Adding more life to our minions. Yeah. Okay, oh, you are the source of the enemy skeletons. Convocation is great when you encounter enemies and your army appears to not entirely be ready for it. There was a bone offering that seems to coincide with the desecrate, but I did have some spider corpses ready. So as I said, I'll probably pop to Standard League after I finish recording this episode. Just have a bit of a look to see what the exact triggering is for a uh, Desecrate Bone Offering. Find Malagaro's map in the crypts. Okay, we got some banshees, I believe. Use ethereal knives. So if you keep at a distance, then they're not going to be too much of a of a problem. Um, of course, them being uh, short range AOE casters does mean that all of your minions will be hit by them Creepy. at the same time. Uh, it's just. Most of these items, once again, of course, are rubbish. Mm, and hybrids, we don't really need to. We, yeah, either pure energy shield or energy shield or with some armor. Dual resists, that's almost a contender for what we have, but again, it's just not good enough. So it's easy to just sell all the things. And then we keep going. So normally I go oh, when in Act 2 or Act, yeah, Act 2. I tend to go to the other side first, also there's an exit there. I go Chamber of Sins and then the Crypt because it is not technically a required chest, uh, request, it's just an optional one. I skip it and I do it in between episodes. Same for the, for the trial here. Now, the order is actually in reverse to do them. Yeah, see, no bone offering here, because there were no corpses yet. So, in the crypt here, we find Malagara's map that presumably he wrote with his own blood. At least I think they said something along those lines. So it's a, it's a very personal thing to him. But it's it's also a bit like you know, something that prevents him from dying. So it's almost like a, like a horcrux for the... In that regard. So it's a, it's a deeply evil thing. And it makes perfect sense for someone like uh, Inquisitor Malagaro to have that. Or to use that. Uh, let's uh, trigger the lever, that opens up that one, but it's usually just a normal chest, not really all that interesting. So, let's put in some minions and then just blow up the bit, everything. Shine and that gets us to two out of three. All may find you when the night falls. The final trial will await us in the Chamber of Sins. 
So that's gonna have to wait until after we face Inquisitor Malakaira. I believe we did see a door there, so let's see if we can just more or less just beeline to it. Ah, this takes us there. I mean, this is just a, a different isolated thing on the same map. No, it's the same, like different levels. It was uh, a little bit of a red herring then that we just saw a, a door to the side because it was actually in a non-adjacent part of the map. I think that they should actually not show this until you gain access to this sequence. No, just have them be hidden or something rather than showing up on the on the map. But make it maybe less confusing. And it, it will actually allow a little bit of an element of surprise when needed. So you don't know what's gonna be where until you're actually there. Though I suspect that might be more complicated tech than they have available. Because the masters currently can't discern between the different areas either. Or the different sub-levels of a, of a level, so to say. Which is oh, pretty annoying if you're at the, the, the last level of the uh, Scepter of God or the uh, the pyramid for example now then there are multiple layers to it but if then you're on the last one and the world's laziest assassin Furichi tells you to hey you now go back and kill someone and you have to walk quite a distance and no they they can't restrict it to the same area but at least they haven't I suspect they might not they might not have the tech for it because it's not just teleportal paths, so to say, between things. But this is just the same area, and they don't make a, a distinction between the different sub levels. But it would be convenient. And as I walk here, I realize there's a really really small corridor there. Uh, that's actually one of the downsides of having the. The pretty outlines set to a little bit too um, opaque. I guess that's the word, opaque, that you cannot see through. Or this one, the outlines, because you can, you, know, you can play with this, which is nice. But this way, it's clearer that there's actually something there. This way, it's even clearer. So it's more difficult to look through it, but that doesn't really matter if all you're doing is just tapping to it every once in a while. Let's uh, try this for a while and see what I, I like it. Yeah. So if I just flash this up briefly. That's Probably not going to be too disturbing. Interface changes. You're never quite done tweaking it to your liking. Same as a loot filter, really. It's also one of those projects that you're never really satisfied with. Especially in regards to, to loot filters, one of the things I have been finding myself thinking or wishing for is just the ability to have some some toggles in your uh, loot filter. So based on the class or skill or whatever arbitrary restriction you have, that you can make some uh, some changes to what is and is not shown. So, uh, for example, in the previous league, at the end of the previous league, I was playing a, a Magic Items Only Flame Blast build. Ooh, that's a lot of Novas going on. But we're playing a, a, a Magic Items Only no, uh, uh, Flame Blast build. 
So suddenly magic item drops were irrelevant for the build while normally I ignore them because it's more efficient to only pick up the, the rares and to just sell the rare items. Also we are done here. So let's empty our pockets and move over. Or you know what? I imagine it was no Oh wah, 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 wah. sorry, lower. I imagine it was no easy feat removing that abomination from its tomb. Of the horrors that must still lurk beneath the fell shrine. Well, I suppose you'll be meeting abominations aplenty where you're going next. Place that map upon Malagaro's reverie device, and remember, hope for the worst. At least then you'll be partially prepared for what's to come. Sorry, been uh, playing with friends uh, uh, recently, so then you just skip through the lore. That was completely not my intention. Okay, but at least we managed to Greetings. Uh, obtain a map. So let's have a quick look. Oh, that's a bad one. And nothing in here is impressive. Hello. Oh, oh, that's of course convenient because then we can just get rid of it. A uh, quest item and just another item to stash away. Good. So, now we're gonna go towards the Chamber of Sins and have a look at Malagaro. So it's gonna be a slightly longer episode than a normal. Since I, I do like, especially for these, uh, for, the, for the first playthrough of the new content to just have a, a, a major fight or something in each and every episode. And so far all we've been doing is just running through areas and just killing things. And uh, talking about some aspects of the game, which is, is fun. But I, I do like there to be at least one highlight in the form of a, a boss battle or something. So we're going to end, uh, end this on a uh, inquisitive high note. Or low note, depending on whether it's Malagoro's perspective or mine. We will defeat him, and he's not going to be too pleased with that. Hello, bears. Goodbye, bears. But yeah, as I was saying, for the, for the loot filters. Right now, all they do is basically determine whether they want to show you an item or not, depending on the item name, item class, the um, item level that it drops at, and the, the drop level, which is the minimum level that it will start dropping at. And using oh, only a couple of data points, basically, you can do a surprising amount of, of things. Because... Now, if an, an item is much higher level than it would drop at, then you can assume, okay, this is a a low tier armor, for example, so it's not going to be relevant anymore. So you can just hide it. But if it's a unique, then of course you want to show it. But if it's a rare, then you maybe just want to have it show as a faint outline, like I do, so you can pick it up and sell it. But you know, it's not going to be something that is worthwhile to equip. So once you're Overloaded with currency, that is something that you can just deprioritize a little bit. But it would be nice to just have a couple of toggles in a loot filter script that you can just set to on and off, like, am I wealthy? Yes or no. Am I looking for specific currency items? Yes or no. And then it will just only uh, show or hide the things that are relevant. And then you can make it more build specific. Then you can only make it show energy shield armor for example uh, if that's what you're using so you can just tailor it a little bit more to the to the build that you're using uh, otherwise you have to uh, do things like generating it completely for the specific build and that that requires a bit more of a tech stack than i'm currently willing to work with but for now let's uh, say hello to elrion our buddy So let's flood the room with skeletons because, well, the enemy is going to do the exact same thing. Orb of Yay. Just to refresh the skeletons a little bit because, well, they do run low on life at some point. 
Oh, nice thing about a room filled with skeletons, of course, is that there's a lot of skeletons to sacrifice little bits of life from. And they do regenerate two and a half, three and a half percent of their life per second now. So I really need to put in quite some effort to even whittle down a, a single skeleton uh, by sacrificing its life. And there we are. So especially with a room full of skeletons, it's got to be difficult to kill them with Dark Pact. Which is convenient. Okay, so in the Chamber of Sins, what we're looking for is the Reverie device in the center of it. Next to uh, the waypoint, which is very convenient. And here we will encounter Silk. Okay. His speech is very soft and there's combat in the back. It's uh, too bad that I haven't really normalized the volume of the speech all that much. Luckily, I can do some magic in post-processing. I have climbed the great eight-leg web. I know the eight legs like Noah. This eight-leg, this black death is one of the oldest and most fearsome eight legs in all this land and beyond. To its shame, it was made pet, plaything by the malicious master of this place. For years countless, it grew with pain. Pain is all it knows, all it can understand, all it can give. End Black Death's pain, for all and once. Okay, but you can do that. Black Venom or Black Death was the spider that usually roamed around here. My great journey led me to places of great power beyond even your stories, great dreamer. I am carried on lakes and webs and shadows. That is all you can know for now. So, Silk is being cryptic and mysterious. Let's uh, use this map device here to insert the Malagaro's map. So, level 55 and already mapping. This is uh, rather nice, isn't it? And then, this is Malagaro's Sanctum. It's definitely a bit of a creepy place. And why did it have to be scorpions? I think scorpions are among the most icky things that crawl around on this planet. Not quite sure why, but they always just look icky. On top of that, they can be pretty dangerous, I understand. So I'm very happy that my country does not have scorpions. It's actually one of the very nice things about the, the Netherlands. I don't think there are any poisonous animals in this country. Well, oh. some 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 toxic toxic internet trolls, of course. Uh, those are going to be the exception, but. Well, speaking of the, the animal kingdom, I don't think we have anything to be afraid of, which is which is very nice. There's a bridge here. It's a bit like the marshes map this. So I don't think these alien looking plants are part of uh, the marshes. Hey, ice bite. This is the new ice bite. Added cold, chance to freeze, 50% chance to gain a frenzy charge on killing a frozen enemy. And you get extra cold per frenzy charge. And I believe Innervate has had a, a similar update. So nice though that, that some of the uh, less used support gems have got a, a little bit of a, a buff. And one slightly more impressive than 6% more damage.
So as with the marshes, no, just walk the bridges that usually get you to where you need to be. And we have some things frozen in time. And a superior quicksilver. Nice. Ooh, corrupted. Lovely. Get some skellies up. And that was that. So, taking some debuff damage. Didn't really do much once it hit life, because of course I do have life regen. I have some, some leech whenever I do damage. So, losing my energy shield doesn't mean that I'm gonna lose the life at the same speed. Ooh. Ooh. Six socketed spider silk rope, you say? Well. Don't mind if I treat that as an upgrade. It's not six links, but six socketed. It's uh, easier to get a five link out of this than out of an actual five link. So I'm gonna have to do some experimenting on that one. But for now, let's uh, say hello to Maligaro. Okay. So that's he disappears and Black Death comes out. Reminds me a lot of the uh, Mechano spiders from the uh, Ghost in the Shell uh, anime. Okay, Fidelitas. Well, oh, the damage output we have is well much more impressive than the damage output that they have. His attacks are relatively well telegraphed. Exception of this, this flicker strike thing that's a little bit more difficult to get a read on. But especially the backstab, you have a decent chance of stepping out from it. But in our case, overwhelming damage solves a lot of issues. Hello, Sin. Our brutal construction nears completion. And now only the wretched Dodri Darktongue remains. Unlike her compeers who, in undeath, have yearned for the familiar, Dodri appears drawn to the old wounds of calamity. The cataclysm took San and left much that a parasite like Dodri might enjoy. I shall meet you in San, where I hope you shall make swift and bloody work of that foul hag. Dodri Darktongue, next. I. That's gonna be an interesting encounter. Because in the beta, I have not managed to face Dodri Dark Tongue without dying at least once in the fight. So hopefully, we've got more damage and I have learned more about how to deal the, with the fight. But it's gonna be an interesting experience. So let's have a chat with everybody about the current state of missions and then we can. Move on to the next episode. The Black Venom. Oh, great dreamer who has done great deeds. I shall see to it that my queen rewards you with honor and mercy when she rises up to claim what is hers. Yes, this elixir, so aged and potent, shall be life-giving draft that she sips upon first waking. It is my gift to her. My wedding gift. Great dreamer, you will be wrapped in silken finery and made welcome at our wedding feast. Guest of honor. And oh, what a feast we all shall enjoy. Okay. Well, this obsidian key is going to be useful for uh, getting to the second level of this chamber of sins. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else. So it's back to town. But it's the, the second person in the expansion content that is going to have a wedding. Let's hope for Silk that it's going to end better than it did for Nessa. What? He's intending to make matrimony with Arakali? My word, that's quite a story even for Silk. Yes, I know that name and the place to which it is purportedly attached. 
a temple to the north, now in ruins. If Silk intends unholy congress with this Arakali, that is the most likely place we would seek it. Unfortunately, Arakali's temple lies beyond that which now belongs to Rarakesh. To reach the many-legged goddess, you must first draw to some conclusion with the many-faced god. Okay. From what I can recall, Arakali was a vowel fertility goddess, a rather unsettling union of sexuality and mortality. Whilst usually presenting herself as a large arachnid, Arakali would often assume human form, a ruse intended to lure mortals into the act of copulation. The entries were vague about the gender of her prey. After satiating her carnal desires, she would then quench her divine thirst, draining her erstwhile lover of all bodily fluid. Her acolytes would then collect the desiccated husk and give it a decorative placement in Arakali's unholy temple. I fear that Silk knows not the true nature of the marriage he so desperately seeks. Oh, Silk. Sounds like it's gonna be Nessa all over again. What you tell me of Silk, this I understand, though I do not want to. I have spent many nights pondering Silk's journey, why he has stepped from the spirit path. Now I know. He has walked into the eight arms of blind lust, Arakali. Silk is a warning to us all. He is trying to take the short trail to greatness, to the story spirit has made for him. Silk tries to steal his story, but now he holds only a lie. Please. You must find the place where this Arakali sleeps in her web of shadow. You must stop Silk before he wakes her. A mistake that we all will come to regret. The spirit tells me this is so. Uh huh. Always listening to the spirits. Spirit says this, spirit says that. I have asked questions of spirit, and it has answered in dreams that wake me with screaming. Arakali will suck all life from this land, leave only empty husks and dusty bones. There will be no spirit, no us, no thing left to love and laugh. Only husks and dust and Arakali. Arakali. One less twisted intellect perverting our world. There is still much to be done. But at least we can rest easier in the knowledge that Melagaro and his foul creations will trouble Rayclass no longer. Here. I know that you and Groost didn't see eye to eye, but I'm sure he would have wanted to recognize this deed. It's the act of a warrior, after all. Okay, let's see. We were gonna go for some Zealot boots here. So upgrade them to Soldier boots. Keep your life to your own. So, Greetings. double check. I think. Hello. Uh, maybe Sin will have something to say about Arakali. I doubt Waylon will have. Good to see you, Stoking. Yeah, Arakali. A temptress and a predator. Val legends say she crawled up from the blackest of pits during the creation of the world. No. Her beginnings were far more mundane. A mortal harlot whose endless lust for loin and lecherous delight saw her transformed into the very image of her dark desires. The Spinner of Shadows, they once called her. She sees herself as a regular goddess of love and has the romantically forged temple to prove it. That's where you'll find her. Yet there's little romance to the lady herself. At least, I doubt the corpses that now embrace her carapace would think so. Spinner of Shadows. Answering the call of a royal invitation, I visited the Spinner of Shadows as an emissary for a small and fragile alliance of gods. Mostly weak deities huddling together in terror of being consumed by their greaters. At this time, Queen Arakali ruled an empire, and so invited me to gaze upon her mighty works with appropriate wonder. If I had looked past this pretense, I may have chanced to see her hidden desire to have me share her bed. 
For years, I lay trapped in her web sheets. Some days, she enjoyed my prowess. Other days, we enjoyed each other. Yet, this illusion of love and leisure simply veiled the morbid reality that I was not free to leave. I languished under her bewitching spell until the day the spider was betrayed by her own flies and sealed within that temple of her own fevered making. <laughs> I do like the, uh, the wordplay there, the spider being sealed by her own flies. But that's going to be uh, a nice point to end it. So we defeated Maligaro. Up next is to find a way through the previous town, face down at Rallakesh and work our way towards Arakali. But that's going to be for next time. So as always, I'm going to thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.